Well, all right, here we are, back at the bench, heading into the middle of March. Kind of cold out, but not brutally cold, so I guess that's okay, although I kind of like the cold. So I just want to throw a video together that originally was going to be this like one hit wonder, quick in, quick out. But then I shifted and said, you know what, let me do a little bit of a blog. Because, you know, I, I put a bunch of effort into it. So maybe making something with a little more meat on its bones be a little more beneficial. So I got a couple of things out here today. Nothing major, something interesting. A couple of cool little things. As usual, a few penguins. Move them out of the way over here to their regular perch. I was actually um, keeping them on what uh, Tammy had coined Penguin Island, which is this piece of flint that I had in the uh, last video that I was using as a uh, sort of a, I was comparing it to, you know, Cochetini and Jasper and stuff. Anyways, it's, it's, it's interesting, but I'm starting to think it's kind of ugly. So it's kind of like Mother Nature threw up here. And it's interesting, you know, from a mineralogy point of view or a geological point of view. But, you know, the color scheme is pretty barfy, you know, so I, I'm not really all that happy with it. Anyway, so um, I figured maybe I'll do this. And the penguins, you know, they really enjoy the Japanese thing. So um, I have this uh, coma. It's really nice. And I'm thinking of uh, keeping the penguins on this sort of like a little penguin platform. I know it's a little uh, luxurious, but you know I can always take it and use it, and it, and it is uh, an exemplary piece of coma. I was able to get a bunch of these, actually. You know, it's funny. I, I, I pick stuff up and put it on my website, and then all of a sudden people tell me they see something like it all over the place. It's like when I was, um, I don't have any out at the moment. I, I did a couple of videos where I was showing the back where it had like chisel marks and then someone emailed me and says, you know, you were talking about chisel marks like two weeks ago and then all of a sudden all over the place I'm seeing stones with chisel marks. What do you think that's all about? And I'm like, I don't know, man. I had a chance to buy some really dope coma at a fairly good price and the shape is weird and the stamping is strange. I know for a fact that these are legit, okay, because I know the source. Anyway, <laughs> so I got this and I'm going to use it as a platform, but it's also a great honing tool. And uh, one of the things I really like about it is, um, I'm going to see if I can get the spotting up and the coloring. I don't know if you can see that. It's not really coming across. The patterning in here, the, 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 there's, a, there's a lot of blue flecks in, in this coma. And um, the coma isn't like a recipe, like it's uh, one part this, one part that, two parts that, and then boom, you add it up and you get coma. Coma is like a, a work in progress. There are lots of different types of coma. Um, if a togishi, you know, someone who's uh, sharpening uh, swords, uh, Nihanto, will have like like 20 coma. Like, and each one is for like different types of steel because it has a different approach and a different fingerprint and so on and so forth. You know, for our needs for hone and razors, you know, we don't have to go there. But um, are you wondering about this? It's an Arkansas stone. This particular type is like a little like brittly feeling. It's very, very fine. It's like stupid fine. Okay. It takes forever to break down. It will just take an edge forever and ever and ever. And, um, and, and I really love it. Okay. So I can have this out here as a penguin platform that I'm honing. I could grab it when I'm in the mood to like hone with that type of stone. I have lots of different types of coma. I have pasty kinds and creamy kinds and whatever, whatever, whatever. You know, just one of those things. You get to a point where like you become a little bit of a connoisseur just because you're exposed to it. I've literally had hundreds of coma uh, come through my hands. And um, so I have a little bit more of a broader range of experience than most people will do. Anyway, this is out, right? This is cool. Um, it's an Arkansas stone. You know, I love Arkansas stones. I have a bunch of them around here. I don't talk too much about them because in the past, all right, this is a soft, right? So soft arc, to me, in my opinion, um, a soft arc needs uh, to be worked with oil. Now, I don't like petroleum-based oils in the house. They stink, okay? They got that aroma. They, they get like really rancidy. Not rancidy, but I don't know, funky kind of smell like a garage. And that's cool in the garage, but it's not cool in my house. And I work in my house, all right? Right now, I'm in a spare bedroom, all right? Spare bedroom. Um, it's like jumbo shrimp or spare change. It's not spare. I'm using it for this. So the softies, like, you know, they just, they lay around. You know, they don't get much action. Uh, I used to use uh, oil stones for sharpening uh, many moons ago. I got into arcs a long time ago for sharpening cutlery. You know, so I, I have these stones. 
and uh, I figured I'd take it out. Uh, and a little discussion about arcs. Uh, some guy was pontificating in, um, in the Facebook group I have about, you know, grits in Arkansas stones. The, the last thing you should do is be discussing grit when it comes to an arc because, like, it, it, forget it. Just, just forget grit, okay? You know, you went to Dan's Whetstone, which is what this guy did, and he read that soft arcs are 600 grit, and then he goes and tells this newcomer that they, they're they pretty true to grit. No, they're not. This is not anything like any 600 grit whetstone that you can go to the store and buy. It is nothing like it at all, all right? Um, I can say that because I've had several of them, 400s, 500s, 600s. This is slower. It'll cut seemingly finer, polish seemingly finer, and slower is like, you know, crazy. Like my, um, my 600 and 400 Chaucera would like strip steel off like big time. This will not do that. It's pressure sensitive. So if I'm really leaning on the blade, it's going to cut harder and cut deeper than if I back off even like incrementally, all of a sudden, boom, everything shifts. So, like, the best thing I ever read about arcs was, uh, it was on a woodworking forum like a bazillion years ago. I, I spent a lot of time reading stuff on forums that I don't belong to because people talk and I, I digest information and then I parse it out later. But the guy said, these things do everything we learn to do with them. Now, that may sound like evasive or something or confusing or uh, frustrating, but that's true. Because you can literally take uh, like a knife, okay, and uh, if you have this surface a little bit coarser than I have it now, and you work on it with pressure and oil, you know, and you eventually, you know, you cut your steel and you clean it up and then you back off and use less pressure. You can actually finish your blade right on this as though you went past a 1K on a synthetic. You know, you're not going to have the polish of a 3K, but you can get an edge that mimics that. Yeah, I know. Someone's going to argue and, like, do a, a fucking war dance on this and, you know, whatever, dude. I've um, been using these things since I was a kid, you know. That's the reality of Arkansas stones. They're not a finite grit, okay? 600 grit doesn't equate to this stone, not in any shape, way, size, or form. There are websites that say uh, translucence, like this, right? They'll say this is 1200 grit. Yeah, no, it, it isn't because this thing will like outperform your 20, 30K synthetics. Okay, um, they're great stones. This is a soft, modern soft. Um, it's got a nice top on it, um, but listen, you hear that? You hear the difference? Okay, that is something that goes on with modern arcs. There's a porosity in these stones that you won't find in a hard arc. But maybe something sold as a hard arc that's really, really soft might have patches of the thing here. I'm going to drop in a photo. I'm going to try and get a close-up on this and, and show it to you. Um, and see if I can get that. Uh, image to translate to what you just heard, all right? Because it's not just a case of course; it's it's a matter of like holes, really, in 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 the stone, and less of them being over here. And uh, I've lapped this down on uh, silicon carbide powder, and um, I've been using knives on. I could hone a razor on it. I could do a bevel on this if I wanted, but they're painfully slow, and they're still fun to work with. Um, but honestly, I think if I was going to set a bevel on an arc, I would get a, a hard arc and I would drop the surface down, you know, to, to a coarser state. And I would just work with that. I, I have some around here someplace. I don't know where it is right now. Um, brilliant stuff. Anyway, um, so I just want to show this off. And I'm going to do some talking about arcs and I'm going to show off some arcs. And I might do some honing on arcs and sharpening on arc videos. Because it, it, <laughs> I was going to stay away from it, but... I keep reading this misinformation that people are just like, you know, there's a whole lot of new, new, new people in, in the wet shaving community that are getting into straight razors that, you know, have either been misinformed or misled. You know, honing is a craft that takes a really long time to understand. Arkansas stones are a science unto themselves. The matrix and the crystalline structure in these stones do not just 
get understood automatically. If you uh, want to learn the science behind these, fine, but you know, go slow, take it easy. And just because you read something on a website, that doesn't make it absolute fact. Dan, I'm not bashing Dan, by the way. Dan's Whetstone um, company is solid. They have been leaders in the industry for a really long time. I have owned stones from Dan's. They've been like pinnacle rocks, all of them. If you email them, they'll tell you that the scale, the grit scale they use does not correspond to any known grit scale standard that's in use in the abrasive industry today. They'll tell you that. And that's a fact, okay? They're using it as a relative thing. They say this is 600 and then this is whatever, basically telling you that this stone is a percentage finer than that stone. But even that, it's like, how did you finish it? What was your um, honing medium? How much pressure? What kind of steel? You know, so on and so forth. It's not cut and dry. It's not like going and taking a nani wash as 1K. And it's 1K and that's it. It's just 1K, period. You're done. It'll never be 3K. You can put soap all over it if you want to. Uh, it's not going to make it a 3K stone. So arcs are almost like a living thing in a way. So learn them slowly. And, and they're great, especially for kitchen knives and stuff. You can like lean on this, man. You know, you got those big, fat, thick chef knives. You can really get into it, you know, and uh, you get yourself a full progression. You can be a happy camper. You can get them in three inch widths and sometimes 10 to 12 inches long. You know, that's crazy. You can't get synthetics like that. Anyway, so that's it on the, um, the soft dog. I have another one of these kicking around here someplace, but I guess it's unimportant at the moment. The other thing that uh, came out in discussion this week were uh, trans arcs and specifically the butterscotch. You know, I go back and forth with these. And um, it, the butterscotch, I mean, you know, translucent arcs, which is what this is. If I take a flashlight, uh, okay, let's see, transmits light. So, translucent. These are the finest grade stones. The uh, specific gravity is over 2.5, 2.6, or something like that. This is an old piece of rock. It's an old pike. Um, came from an old uh, machinist's chest. It was really damaged. So, I uh, wanted to investigate and I wanted to alleviate the damage. So, what I did was I cut it. Yes, I know. Horrific, right? But basically, I cut this end piece off, right? Now you can see here, you can see like a lot of white, and, you know, this piece has been soaking in simple green, right? So my thing is, is like, what is a butterscotch arc? I think there's a lot of factors in play. We know that translucent arcs come in a yellowish warm amber color, so that could be part of the uh, butterscotch uh, heritage. We also wonder sometimes whether or not the stones absorb oil. So I soaked this in simple green, but you can see the top surface has still got this yellowish thing. But if you look along the cut edge, you see definitely you see white. Now, I'm going to use my Tomo oil, Tomo Glide. Okay. So, see I got a little on the thing there? Now watch. Fucking A, right? Scratch marks seem to disappear. All of the seemingly paler sections this oil by the way is totally clear there is absolutely nothing amber about this oil so anyway what i think is at least part of the story the origin of these um arcs is that some of the stones come along being like kind of yellowish i think the addition of oil Oil does get absorbed into it. You can see it under magnification. You can see that the cut surface where it's white, that there's no yellowish thing there, and the light is diffracting a different way. I think once the oil kind of works into the very, 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 very tiny, tiny porosity structure in this thing, because it's really dense, um, I think you get a different type of light diffraction. And I think the crystalline structure of the stone is enhancing that yellowish tone. So now... You know, boom, it's back to being just like that. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It means nothing to me. It's just one of these things like I'm kind of interested in. What I've found over the years, you know, if I have a pure white, okay, pure white trans arc, okay, I am not going to find a um, 
think I can get this to transmit light. This one's a lot thicker. Yeah, you can see there it's coming through. But it's twice as thick, so it's not going to transmit as much light as this one. See? So, anyway, the difference in working performance between these two is that if I lap them the same to the same level of polish on the same whatever, whatever, like, you know, it's a sick to uh, SIC, you know, silicon carbide powder to um, 220, 400, whatever. As long as I do them both to the uh, same grid for the same amount of time to establish the same kind of polish, they both perform identically. So I am not finding that the butterscotch is some kind of like special stone, okay? I keep seeing people allude to that. Again, it's a, an internet thing where people are like, what did the guy just say? Yeah, he just said something. It was like completely unfounded. And it's like, you know, that type of confusion, it gets like passed along through the community and that like that game uh, telephone. It just gets distorted along the way. And then all of a sudden you find people with yellow Arkansas stones. They're going to like start charging like $500 for them because they're better. But anyway, so that's that. Um... In contrast to this, the soft arc, if I was uh, looking to do arcs and I wanted to do um, bevel setting, I would not pass on the soft arc. I mean, those stones cost like, I don't know, 30 bucks. How can you beat that? All right. Look at the size of that stone. Eight by three, an inch thick. It'll last forever. It'll last for like 10 generations. All right. Can't beat it. But let's just say I had a choice. I would go to Washita from long ago. Now, this is a little one. I wouldn't pick this one, okay? But this one is out. This is a beautiful stone. This is from Pike. That it's labeled Pike Soft Arkansas, which is unusual. But that puts it to like pre-1930, I think. Um, this one is also a Pike, but this is a Lily White, okay? And um, it's a little bit bigger. One by almost two. Excuse me, eight by almost two. It is a killer stone. I, I would definitely, because I have this, these are really expensive now, though, you know? But I have it, so I would grab this first to do bevel setting, I think, before I use the, uh, the soft arc. But if you don't have one of these, the soft arc, it's going to work, man. You know, it's going to work. You're going to get the job done. And, you know, like I said, it costs like $29. You can't beat that with an ugly stick. Just can't. The main reason I was going to do a video today <laughs> is this, right? And this is going to be like I'm leading into the end now. Anyway, so... What this is, is uh, it's a Shapton glass stone. Now, you know glass stones are not my favorite thing in the world because there's glass on them. And, you know, I'm clumsy. I drop stuff. If I drop this, it's probably going to break. Now, I believe it's tempered, so it's going to be like resilient, more resilient, but it's still glass. But, you know, we live with some bad engineering principles sometimes. The glass is going to be theoretically dimensionally stable and keep the stone from, like, curling up. I think that's basically the idea. What this is, is it's the new, here, uh, glass stone 7. The 7 relates to the thickness of the abrasive. This is 7 millimeters thick. If you remember the originals, they were 5 millimeters thick. So they gave you an extra 2 millimeters, even though you're only getting like less than half a stone. But this is cheap. I'll get to that in a minute. This particular one, 0.44 micron, which is finer than their 30k. Now, if you've been around a while, you know that the 30K and the 16K are not recommended for honing razors. That's per Shapton, by the way. Um, they have it X'd off on their chart. They stop at 10K. I don't know why, but I will tell you that a lot of people had a lot of trouble with the 16 and 30K stones. Microchipping and artifacting and leaving harsh edges and so on and so forth. I believe a lot of that was due to not really finding a way to get to that level of grit that allowed that grit to make an edge that was at least a little bit better than people were experiencing. I remember Jende was doing uh, experiments and what have you, because at the time those stones were being like really sought after by people who wanted to go to high grit fill. Anyway, I usually don't give a rat's ass about high grit finishers because I use a, a JNet, right? Or, a, a, or whatever. But um, I thought this was interesting because look at it, right? It's like a barber hunk, kind of. 
and it was it was like I don't know, sixty bucks, sixty five bucks with shipping or something like that, fifty five, sixty seven bucks something. So here I have this high grit thing, okay, that that's small enough to fit into a kit. Maybe if I wrap it up in like a little type of microfilm or something, you know, the box is a little bulky, but you give it a nice wrap. I could throw it in my dop kit. I don't necessarily want to do that, but I think it's interesting to people who, you know, might not have, you know, a small JNAT or a Thuringian, or maybe they just want a synth thing or what have you. Plus, I wanted to check out this grit thing. Now, this is a whole series, the, the Glassstone 7. They have a whole run, but it's not as diverse as the regular Glassstones. And they have like little system packages that are really expensive that come with their own diamond plates and a whole bunch of happy horseshit. That's marketing, it's retail, fine, whatever. People with a lot of money can go for that stuff. It's one-stop shopping. God bless them. I can't do it. Don't even want to, really. I just wanted this because I want to check it out. It's nice. I, I don't know that I can say it's worth the 50, 60 bucks, really. It's interesting. I don't think it was a bad price, but if you compare it to a Frictionite Double Zero, it's a steal because a Frictionite Double Zero is going to go for like a buck and a quarter, buck fifty. This is going to give you a little bit finer edge than that. How much finer? I don't know, man. <laughs> you know, and I got my Frictionite for a uh, you know for less than what they go for now, so it's a toss up. But this, I have to say it, it's a solid piece. You know, it's a solid stone. I got nothing really, you know, negative to say about it. I thought I was going to hate it. I thought the grit was going to be terribly, like, awful on, on my face. So, um, basically what I did, I've been, I've had it for a little while, right? So, I was working with this and a couple of other razors. I didn't want to jack up too many edges. And, and this is a gold dollar. It's a piece of crap. I don't care about it. Um, this is the one with uh, self-destructing scales. Um, every time I, I go to handle this thing, they're, they're like moving and bending and the blade keeps hitting it. But the, the edge, I can shave with it. So um, I'll just discuss this one right now. I, I took the edge to a decent, not a super high-end uh, finish on a JNET. And I could have shaved with it just fine the way it was, right? But then I went to this. Now, normally, I won't go to an extreme fine synthetic grit after a reasonably refined JNAP because I find that you just create an issue. But this was a test. And you know what? The edge did okay. Even for this crappy steel in this little letter opener shaver, it was all right, you know? I shaved with it this morning just so I could, like, give a fresh report because I got a bunch of these tests under my belt. And I will say that if I stop shy of that refined JNAT stone, I get a little bit more smoothness, which is why I'm feeling a little bit of irritation on my skin now, but it's not bad. And the shave was pretty good. And it did my against the grain under my nose, like just fine. If I would have taken my JNAT edge all the way, it would have been better than this, notably, smoother, sharper, cutting better but this did the job it did everything that i would have expected it and it would have done everything i would want it to do like the reason i bought it, it it fulfilled that need and that expectation so this is a decent thing you know um 50 60 bucks it's fun to play around with uh, do i think everyone should just go out and buy it nah you know uh, if you have a need okay maybe consider it I don't know how many people actually have a need for something like this. Like, how many people actually, like, travel a lot with their straight razor? I, I know, the guys are out there, but, I mean, you know, percentage-wise, it's a very narrow window there. See how it fits like this? So if you, you could just, like, slide that into a pouch, that's a nice thing, you know, because, you know, edges are weird. You know, you, you, you sharpen them. Yeah, here we go. The blade's hitting again. This stupid piece of crap gold dollar. Um... No, really, this this is like a love-hate relationship with me. Anyway, a good thing for someone who travels, even though there aren't a lot of those people. Personally, I would rather go with a Thuringian or a JNAT, which is what I actually do. But if you don't have either of those things and you want something small and you're into this, like, you know, techie kind of look, I mean, you know, if the packaging is sweet, you know, has this nice boxing thing here. It's, like, well thought out, you know. Uh, comes with like some kind of directions. Interesting. Says don't use soap. First synthetic stone that says don't use soap on it says it'll damage it. Now I've been saying this for like a long time. 
all the old time poobahs were like, oh, take the Norton and put dish soap on it. No, that's bullshit. I'm saying like, and, and here you go. I know this isn't a Norton, but right here, here's a stone manufacturer saying that that type of thing can damage a synthetic stone. I'm editing this in after the fact. I realized I didn't um, show this off in use, which was something I thought might be of interest to somebody. I don't know. The arcs and stuff, I'll show you that in an arc-centric video. This is just sort of like an educational vlog type of thing. So anyway, um, using this, you know, it's fairly straightforward and pretty easy. You know, it kind of just fits in your hand, you know, and it's got like that extra couple of millimeters actually does help. So basically, it's water only, you know. You just hit it with some water. Get your blade out. Now, you just kind of balance it in your hand, you know. And start, make sure you got your heel on the stone, right? And you just, like this. You can see some swarf. Maybe you can see some. That's from a earlier touch-up. Now, what I recommend, honestly, if you're going to use this right before you shave, Try and keep the lap count down, way down. I found that if I get 15, 20 laps on this, I start to pick up some artifacting that I don't really like. I think this stone does best if all the work before it is done pretty well. And you just do like 10 to 12 laps. You'll do your shave. You'll have a good shave. You know, and then do some stropping and stuff. And then maybe before the next shave, if you think it's maybe not quite there, just do like five or six more. I think adding on top of an initial 10 to 12 with three to six more laps on subsequent sessions where you've stropped in between I, I think it's a good balance it's a very fine synthetic that um it will leave some tooth in the edge if you continue to hone too long so like 10 12 laps for a touch-up i think is fine you know that's the way i see it but anyway anyway you know everyone's going to have their own take on that uh, experiment go 25 laps see how it's like go 10 see what it's like go 15 see what it's like go 30 or 40 and see what it's like and then come back that's how you figure out like what your sweet spot is for me and my edges 10 to 12 i don't want to do more than that you know that's just for me though anyway moving on i hope that um somebody got something out of this as usual you know if you have questions or whatever uh, put, put something in the comments this is all about fun all right it's not dick measuring it's not about going online and being in argument with people you know it's not about like trying to be the person that knows everything that everybody else does and that's bullshit right? we're here to help one another we're here to pass on good information if someone's passing on bad information it's okay to call it out try and be respectful but if you can't well whatever it's better to have the truth in a harsh tone than get a lie presented as like a real friendly statement that's the way i think about it anyway um with that on the table get out there do some honing pretty soon it'll be warm out and you guys will all be going to the beach and you'll be wondering why you're not getting all your honing time in so maximize on this indoor weather right now okay take care talk to you soon and always have fun